Since the invention of cars, we've had car crashes. And while cars have become safer over time, there's an unsettling truth. In the event of a crash, statistics show women are more likely to be killed or seriously injured than men. But why? Crash test dummies are not just a cheesy 90s band. They're the unsung heroes of the automotive world, taking endless hits to make our roads safer. But these rubber superstars have a secret. They were built for men, and this bias affects the safety of every woman behind the wheel. Regulatory test that we use uh, says that you have to use a model of an average male, and that's the full stop. Today, our women are in the front seat. In fact, they're in the driver's seat. And we need to reflect that in our testing protocol to have women in the driver's seat. And every moment that we wait, we're jeopardizing another mother, sister, daughter. Exploring the evolution from the early days of crash tests to cutting edge technology in today's crash test dummies, we delve into efforts by engineers to rectify gender bias in car safety. For us, for everybody here, the approach is to make the road traffic safer for everybody. Crash test dummies have played a crucial role in improving car safety and revolutionizing the way we design and test vehicles. Since we've had crash tests, car safety has developed and improved. Well, the crash test dummy is the pioneer and it's the basis for which all crash safety equipment is measured. So every vehicle, when you talk about crumple zones and you talk about advanced features like automatic braking and re different types of restraints, including the airbag and the seat belt and pretensioners, they're all modeled and based on the crash test dummy. We owe thanks to these lifeless wonders, but there's a catch. They were mainly created with men in mind, and the initial dummies represented the average man. Historically and currently, we cannot assess the safety for both part of the population. But in 1980, the base dummy, the Hybrid 3 Fifth, 5-0 became the basis for WIT all testing, and that's used in the majority of all testing requirements worldwide. It's used in the driver's seat, it's used in other positions, and it was based on the average male size with the idea that the male drove, so he was in the driver's seat. And as safety testing directly affects car design, this has a big impact. Here are some horrifying facts U.S. data has shown. As a woman, you're 17% more likely to die in a car crash and 73% more likely to be seriously injured than a man in the same vehicle. When we look at crash test, what's called the NCAP, the crash test ratings for cars, um, I, I assume most people think that they are also being represented for women who, by the way, drive more than men these days. In the mid-20th century, as cars became more popular and accidents increased, manufacturers, driven by safety concerns and government interest, looked for ways to enhance safety records. The U.S. took the lead, forming the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in 1970. In 1970s, we started using crash test dummies. At that time, they were loyal to a male body, a male physique. So they only tested for men, if you will. 1970s really became the emergence of the more modern crash test dummy. It started with the Hybrid 2 and then advanced to the Hybrid 3, which is really known as the modern crash test dummy. The Hybrid 3 is the industry standard for frontal crash testing and mirrors the average 50th percentile man in height and weight, i.e. the median. A percentile indicates the height and weight compared to the rest of the population. For example, a 95th percentile dummy would represent a man in the 95th percentile for body dimensions, which means that he's larger than 95% of men in the population. Equipped with articulated joints and sensors, it records data on forces, accelerations, and injury criteria serving as a crucial tool in replicating human biomechanics. But there is a problem. The 50th was the primary workhorse. The primary tool was used from 1980 to today. It's still the primary use of tool. 
And we're going on 40 to 50 years of use of this dummy that has limited sensors, old technology. The second most used crash test dummy is the fifth percentile, which is a scaled down version of the 50th percentile man at a height of 152 centimeters and weight of 50 kilos. In the 90s, we realized that we didn't have a female crash test dummy, so there was a, a movement to say, let's make this small male female-like. So they put a breast vinyl jacket on it, and it doesn't make it a female. This neglect in car crash testing and car design has had real-life consequences. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in the U.S. has identified increased safety risks for women in most areas of the body. There's been modifications to a, a male fifth to try to say she's a female. But if you look at the actual injuries and address what the injuries are that are different between a male and a female, and there's many, there's still a lot more that can be done. And this is why a specialty purpose designed female crash test dummy is vital right now. So in 2024, they're still using the shrunken male dummy as a female representation. All those things that we know are different physiologically from a, um, a, a man and a woman have not been incorporated into the crash test dummy, nor are even the scaled down male being used behind the wheel of the car. In recent years, more advanced female crash test dummies have been developed, addressing the needs of female occupants, including differences in neck strength, hip anatomy, and pelvis structure. One modeled on the average female is the SET 50F, designed by researchers at the Swedish National Road and Transport Research Institute. The average female model is developed specifically for low severity brain impacts. SET 50F stands for Seat Evaluation Tool Female, and 50 is the median value for the height of a real woman. This was created alongside a male version, SET 50. The sets are designed to evaluate the safety performance of car seats in low severity rear impact, and also show how these affect the female and male body differently. Another model is the Thor 5F, an advanced female frontal impact dummy that corresponds with the fifth percentile of the female population. They were designed with actual female anthropometry data, ensuring a form distinct from its male version. Humanetics is the originator of crash test dummies. Their origins can be traced back to the 50s and Samuel Alderson, who created the first crash test dummy, Sierra Sam, for testing aircraft safety systems. This groundbreaking technology paved the way for developing automotive crash test dummies ever since. Humanetics has since become the largest maker of dummies, producing a wide range of models. And the Thor 5F looks to address the biggest risks for women. 54% of fatalities are associated with frontal crashes. The Thor 5F boasts 150 sensor channels strategically placed to address areas where women are more susceptible to injury in frontal car crashes. As with the SET 50F, it offers a promising solution tackling different gaps in safety testing for women. It's important to note the U.S. and Europe have different testing agencies and standards. Vehicle safety testing in the U.S. is regulated by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. In Europe, the European New Car Assessment Program independently evaluates safety with similar crash tests and all use a star rating system. But neither use a female crash test dummy in a frontal impact test. So that five-star rated car you're driving might not be as safe as you think, depending who's behind the wheel. People just assumed when they go into a car dealership and they are asking for the end cap five-star cars with regard to crash the safety, they do not presume that it is meant only for one sex. There are still 1.35 million fatalities globally, with the U.S. boasting 43,000 fatalities. So there's plenty of room for improvement. So even if the entire world says, 
we we need this tomorrow. Uh, it can take years. Um, it's kind of like introducing a medical product uh, into the marketplace. It takes years to go through an FDA approval. The crash test dummies have a similar process. As a consequence, we see these disparities and in injuries that can happen for years and years before a test device is provided into the marketplace. But there are signs of change on the horizon. Euro NCAP has suggested it will introduce the Thor 5F by 2030. And in a world first, Mercedes used two EVs in a public crash test, traveling at 56 kilometers an hour to simulate a higher energy collision. It's a milestone of our development. Our vision is zero fatal accidents in 2050. For us, for everybody here, the approach is to make the road traffic safer for everybody. One big thing to note is the test used female dummies in the driver's seat, emphasizing the focus on creating protection systems for a broad customer base. But currently, new female models are still not used by regulators. But they're not the only answer. Virtual testing and simulations also play a prominent role in the future of car safety. These virtual models will complement physical crash tests, allowing car makers to conduct a wider range of evaluations cost-effectively. But they need authentic data. We all know with the dangers of artificial intelligence that it depends on the data that's put in. So if you don't have data with regard to the safety of a crash test dummy that is biofidelic to a female, your data is going to be skewed from the get-go. New cars have already seen decreased disparities in car crashes between genders. NHTSA found the difference in female fatality risk compared to male is reduced in newer vehicles from 18% to 6.3. I think the the, the folks who want to resist change are trying to use fatalities for a benefit of saying we don't need to do more because the difference between a female and a male in a fatality isn't that great. But when you look at the injuries, it's significant. The difference between a male and a female in injuries is cataclysmic and we're seeing those injuries going up. As consumers become more aware of the issue with crash test diversity, could this impact car companies directly? Women are buying more cars and driving more cars than men. So, so the use um, and the practicality is there. Unfortunately, the death and, and serious injuries numbers are there. And we can't solve it by just talking about it. We all know that auto safety is the number one reason um, the majority of the world buys a vehicle. So safety is not a marketing gimmick, it's a requirement. And whoever continues to advance safety, I think will get more and more market share. The Vision Zero approach, aiming for zero traffic fatalities, will continue to gain momentum as an overarching goal for road safety. If the community is really after zero fatalities, and reducing the increasing of injuries that we're constantly seeing. We have to do more. And so if we're measuring one size, a 50th percentile male in the driver's seat, it minimizes the use of adaptable restraints. And by putting in a female and a male in a driver's seat, it's one step closer. Can new EV brands from the likes of China push the industry to address gender bias? I believe clearly that if a car company comes out and can assure consumers that there is a safety standard that is beneficial to both women and men, that there would be a market-driven push for other car companies to do that. I think we will see China in the next five to ten years take leadership roles in, in introducing safety protocols uh, to the marketplace, especially as electric vehicles and uh, levels of autonomy vehicle uh, become more of uh, a norm. Efforts are underway to change the status quo from historical reliance on male-centric models to the introduction of female crash test dummies like the Thor 5F and Set 50F. But the journey is ongoing, with regulatory bodies still needing a female dummy in frontal impact tests. As electric vehicles reshape the industry and new players from China emerge, 
the push for gender-inclusive safety gains momentum. The difference in crash test outcomes has real-world impacts for women. In a safety-focused world, the path toward Vision Zero must be an inclusive one. If you liked this video, don't be a dummy and subscribe to Rev. Oh, you dummy.